Good morning. Good morning. This is Monday Morning Manor with Pastor A. I pray that you all are doing well on this Monday morning. Pray that you had an awesome weekend, a great, um, awesome uh, worship encounter, even at your local assembly of churches. I'm just so glad to be here. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And we're here. We had some technical difficulties in the beginning, but we're here. We we'll thank God for what he's done, even for what he's getting ready to do. Amen. As we are here on week number six. Yes, week number six. If you notice, I have upped my time. I'm no longer at 830 in the morning. I'm at seven o'clock a.m. on Monday morning. And so we're here. And if you're just getting on here, um, just hit the like button, hit the share button, text somebody and uh, leave me a comment. And also any time of the day, you can always hit the replay button. But today we are talking about when the day and the main focus is wind the clock. Wind the clock. I'm just so blessed um, on this day. Um, um, having some challenges is even now, but, you know, I believe that prayer changes things as well as people. Um, I believe that, you know, prayer will heal, set free, and deliver. And so I need that from you to pray for me as I'm going through some uh, little health challenge, but all is well, all is good, and it's going to be good, even better. So as we hear on Wind the Clock, uh, week number six, wind the clock and the big idea here is that you don't find time you don't find time you make time hmm. so my focal scriptures and if you want to read at your leisure um later on today ephesians 5 16 and second peter 3 and 8 and so father god we thank you for this time we thank god for your loving kindness and your tender mercy we thank you lord for even waking us up this morning with our minds stay on you that you will give us perfect peace and god give us what we need for throughout the day and even throughout the week and god we don't know what we may be facing but god we need you to help us on today god give us encouragement god push us in god to where we need to be and and whatever that may looks like i just want to say thank you lord in advance in the name of jesus and help those even on their way to work and preparing, getting ready, God. We just pray that, God, you give them the strength they need to be able to do what they need to do. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Amen. So we're here on when the day wind the clock. So many years ago, there was this professor by the name of Dr. Tony Campolo. Um, he was teaching a class. He was teaching a class at the University of Pennsylvania. And when he turned, when he turned an ordinary lecture, a lecture into an unforgettable lesson. Now he asked at that point, he asked the student sitting on the front row, and some of you might have heard the story, um, but he said, young man, how long have you lived? Hmm. But the, but the unsuspecting student, he answered his age. And he said, no, 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 said Tony Campolo. He said, that's how long. He said, that's how long your heart has been pumping blood. That's not how long you live. I just need you to stay with me. But that's when Tony Campolo, Campolo he told the class a story a story about one of the most memorable, memorable moments of his life. But in 1944, his fourth grade class, they took a field trip to the top of the Empire State Building, which is the tallest building in the world at that time. You see, when the nine-year-old Tony got off the elevator, <laughs> And he stepped out, he stepped out onto the observation deck overlooking the New York City. Time stood still. Now, if I live a million years, said Tony Campolo, that moment, he said that moment will still be part of my consciousness because I was fully alive when I lived it, my God. So Tony, he turned back to that same student and he said, he said, now let me ask you the question again. How long have you lived? 
So when you say it that way, the student said maybe an hour, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. But let me ask two questions here. One is how old are you? And two, how long have you lived? So back to the focus point of when the day. As the, fo the real focal point is, we're going to wind the clock. But it's easy. It is easy calculating age, but much more difficult quantifying life. And the question is why? It's because time is measured in minutes. But life is measured in moments. So what are those Empire State Building moments for you? I ask, but when was the last time that time stood still? Not sure whether you can answer that question, but and if you turn, if you turn those moments into minutes, how long have you lived? Why the clock? So as we talk today on when the day, on this morning, we have talked about five habits for the last, last five weeks. And we talked about flip the script. We talked about kiss the wave. We talked about eat the frog. And we talked about fly the kite as well as cut the rope. And now on the day, it is time to wind the clock which is habit number six. But if you happen to have your Bibles, even now or even later, look at Ephesians 5, 16. But before we talk about minutes and moments, there are three thoughts here. And the goal this weekend is a right relationship with time, but lots of people, lots of people live in the wrong time zone. They're stuck in past tense guilt. Paralyzed by future tense fear. But either way, either way, they're half present half the time, which means they are half alive. My God. Now, my goal, my goal is to close the gap between those two questions. How old are you? And how long have you lived? But here I want to help you. I want to help somebody to make the most of minutes and moments. As we wind the clock. But time management is not just practical here. It's not just practical. It's the logical. But so the three thoughts before we wind the clock. <laughs> and one is time is a human construct <laughs> then with the Lord a day is like a thousand years taking Peter 3 8 and a thousand years are like a day now that makes no sense in four dimensions of space time but news flash the news flash is that God does not exist within the space time dimension he created there is no past, there is no present and future. But the challenge that we face is that four dimensions is all we ever know. My God. But in the beginning, in the beginning, we were created in the image of God. We have been created, creating God in our image ever since. So we timestamp God. No, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is Alpha and Omega, Lord God. The beginning and the end. He is the ancient of day. And in the words of the theologian, Paul Tillich, God is the internal now, my God. All of that to say this, is that creation was God's way of starting the clock. Hallelujah. We have been on the clock since God said, let there be light. And that said, the day is coming when we'll cross, we'll cross the space time, continue and enter a dimension the Bible calls heaven. And we think of heaven as a future destination. 
and it is, but heaven is invading earth. And eternity is invading time right here and right now. One cup. In order for you to win the day. But two, number two, is that we live forward. But God is working backwards. <laughs> now we are God's, we are God's workmanship. Ephesians 2.10, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Prepare for us in advance. And this is where our holy confidence comes from. God is setting you up. God wants you to get where God wants you to go more than you want to get where God wants you to go. And he's really good at getting you there. Thank you, Jesus. He is ordering your steps. He's ordering my step. He is working all things together for our good. Certainly doesn't mean all things are good. Because we live in a fallen world. Bad things happen to good people. Because of this thing called free will. Now that's sad. That said, God can redeem. He can redeem and he can recycle the pain and the suffering. But and the same God, I said the same God, who, who, who begin a good work will carry it to completion. Hallelujah. So there is a fancy word in philosophy. <laughs> and it's called tele tele teleology. It's beginning with the end in mind. That's who God is. That's what God does. And for us, the arrow, the arrow of time, it moves in one direction. Past, present, future. Then Jesus, he shows up and he says before Abraham, was I am, wait, what? Joshua 6, 2 is a great example as well. But God says, I will deliver Jacob into your hands. No, that's not what he says. It says, I have delivered Jericho into your hands. <laughs> but that's the wrong verb tense, right? It should be future tense. It hasn't happened yet. So why is it past then? It's because that brings us to a third thought here that three, everything is created twice. It's created twice. Now everything was once a thought. <laughs> now there is an internal or mental or spiritual creation first. Then only then, only then is there a physical manifestation. And that's what um, energy unborn tomorrows is all about here. And the layout of Washington, D.C. First existed in the imagination of Pierre Charles Lafont. And the military engineer turned urban planner transformed, he transferred those ideas to a 20 ounce piece of paper, which now sits in a plexiglass case breathing, pressurized organ gas at the Library of Congress. Why the come? But when we navigate Pennsylvania Avenue or run around the National Mall, we are navigating places and spaces that were once thoughts and ideas. Now our physical reality was nothing, nothing more than an idea that existed in the mind and the imagination of Pierre Charles Lafont. Now this is part of the image of God. It's that image that allows us to imagine. But according to the Talmud, Talmud um, um, along with everything that God spoke into the existence during the six days of creation, God made provision. He made provision for miraculous moments that would happen throughout human history. Why the 
God. But again, this is a, 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 a rabbinic tradition, but it's, but it's in keeping with God's character, my Lord. He commanded the Red Sea to split apart. Yes, he did. The sun and the moon stand still for Joshua. Yes, he did. The ravens to feed Elijah. The fish to spit out Jonah. The fire not the, 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 fire, the fire not to burn Shadrach, Meshach, and the Benigo. And the lions not to harm Daniel. But this is all simply put here. When God gives a vision, he makes provision. Hmm. Yes, he does. And we have experienced that a hundred, a hundred and one ways as a church, my Lord. So I have a witness here, and here's what I know for sure. <laughs> I know that we live at the intersection of two theologies, two realities, the faithfulness of God. His pursuing us from the past and the sovereignty of God is setting us up for the future. My God, thank you. Hallelujah. So you are here for such a time as this. Can I remind you? That we are here for such a time as this and you are here for such a place as this. My God. But here is the bottom line. Here's the bottom line and, the, and the, the bottom line and the big idea. God can, God can do more in one day than you can accomplish in a thousand lifetimes. And that said, you have to wind the clock. My Lord. Ephesians 5, 16 says that be very careful. Then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. You see, the King James Version says, redeem the time. Now, let me talk about minutes, then we'll talk about moments. But in 1977, the Russian comedian, the name is Yakov Smyrta, he, he was immigrated to the United States. And he was asked, he was asked what he loved most about America. And his answer was our grocery store. He said, I walked down an aisle and saw a pile of milk. He said, just add water and you get milk, my Lord. He said, right next to it, it was powdered orange juice. Just as water and you get orange juice. <laughs> then I saw baby powder. And I thought to myself, what a country. <laughs> Then we wish, right? We live in a culture that aims at 15 minutes of fame. 15 minutes of fame. We want to get quick. We want to get rich quick. We want the quick fix. We, we are an instant gratification culture. Now, I hate to say it, but Rome wasn't built in a day. It's probably going to take longer than your life, but let me share some thoughts on managing minutes, then I'll share some thoughts on managing moments. So here's the bottom line. And the big idea, when it comes to managing time, you don't find time. You don't find time, you make time. Now, all of us are allotted the same amount of seconds every minute. The same amount of minutes every hour. The same amount of hours every day, but time is the great equalizer. Now I'll let you on, I'll let you on, on a little secret here. You don't find time in, in writing books, you make time. You don't find time to train for a marathon, you make time. You don't find time for your family, you make time. How? One is you got to curse the barren fig tree. 
And in the gospel, this there is a miracle. There is a miracle I find fascinating. It's in a category all by itself. You know, all of the other miracles are life-giving. The one is the one, the one is the exact opposite. Jesus curses. He curses the barren fig tree. The question is why? Because pretty simple is not producing fruit. <laughs> That's not good stewardship. Faithfulness is fruitfulness. Now, all of us have barren fig trees in our lives, things that waste time and things that waste energy. But the average person spends 142 minutes on social media a day. But is that the way you want to spend 15% of your waking hours? Cursing. Cursing the barren fig tree is identifying the things that waste time. It's saving time the same way you would save money. Let me come, let me come right out and say this. Setting your alarm clock, your, your alarm clock is a spiritual decision. Now, I'm not here to guilt trip anybody. But let me say this up front. Just as we have different personality types, we have different chronotypes. But if you are a lark, you got to guard those early morning hours. If you are an owl, it's leveraging those late nights instead of watching late night TV. Now you have to figure out, you have to figure out what works for you. Because what worked for you might not work for me and what worked for me might not work for you. But one way to curse the barren tree is called habit stacking. Now, it's a new idea that is as old as the shimmer, but you got to leverage your daily routines and create ways. You have to create cool cues that trigger good habits. Wind the car. They'll put a book in your bathroom. And you can read a book a month. Now, some of you have more potential than that. Don't just listen to the news, pray for the news. Great way to redeem the time. Now listen, listen to a podcast while you exercise. Listen to an audio book while you commute. You redeem the time by turning those daily routines into good habits. Now finally, finally you curse the barren fig tree by establishing boundaries. Establishing boundaries is making predecisions. Number two, do the math. How many minutes or hours does it take you to prepare a sermon? How many minutes do you spend meeting with others? How many minutes does it take you to read 20 pages of a book? How many minutes do you spend commuting? And how many commutes would it take to complete an audio book? Once you do the math, you can reverse engineer your goals and calculate where you want to be. But if I want to read a book a month, and the average book is 300 pages that I need to read about 10 pages a day to reach my goal. What the club? That's how I manage minutes. I do the math. You manage minutes by cursing the barren, the barren fig tree. And by doing the math, all right, let me switch gears. Now, if managing minutes is a science, then managing moments is an art. It's a soft skill. It's a sixth sense. Now the ancient Greeks had two words for time and it's chronos and kairos. The ancient Greeks had two words for time, chronos and kairos, but they are two sides of the same coin. But they are as different as heads and tails. Chronos is a clock time. 
is where we get our word chronology. Chronos is sequential, past, present, and future. And chronos is quantitative, is seconds, minutes, and hours. So managing chronos time is incredibly important. If you don't control your calendar, your calendar will control you. I certainly believe in Lombardi time if you aren't 15 minutes early. You're late. <laughs> that said, the word used in Ephesians 5.16 is carols. It's both top of the empire, the empire state building moments. It actually translates in two ways. Time or opportunity. So in a sense, it's counting the call. And not just the actual cause, but the opportunity cause. Again, there are decades when nothing happens. And there are days when that decades happen. Kairos is about seizing those days. It's recognizing holy moments and taking off your shoes. It's smelling the roses or in the words of Jesus, considering the lily. Same difference, but as I conclude here, as you wind, if you win the day, as you wind the clock, okay, great. Hmm. So what do I do with this time-sensitive information? What do I do? One is steward teachable moments. Teachable moments are Kairos moments. Now, I think those moments present themselves all the time. But all too often, we react rather than proact. We react, we, we react in the flesh instead of seeing that the moment for what it is, a teachable moment. What have I learned from this? Not always taking it personal. These are the moments that changes our lives. But how do you whine? The Kairos clock. Oh. You do it by, by, you have to pay attention to those promptings of the Holy Spirit. You see opportunities where others see issues. So no one was better at this than Jesus. <laughs> no one. The religious leaders wanted to stone the woman caught in the act of adultery. Jesus, he steps up and he steps in over my dead body. The religious leaders, they criticize the woman who anoints his feet. And Jesus says, the world will hear what you've done for me. The disciples tried to keep the kids away. We got places to go and things to do, my Lord. No, let the little children come unto me. Even on the cross, Jesus is all, he's all about everyone else. He says to the soldier, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He tells John to look out for his mother, my Lord. He even shows grace to one of the men hanging on the cross next to him. So there are people that are all around us all the time that needs us to be peacemakers, grace givers, and tone setters. And two, winding the Kairos, Kairos clock is accumulating experiences. Now try this out. Try out this little mantra. Don't accumulate possessions, but accumulate experiences. Now, I haven't met many people possessed by a demon, but I have met lots of people possessed by their possessions. Now, let me tell you where that mantra comes from. But again here, there are decades when nothing happens. And there are days when decades happen. And they come in all sizes and they come in all shapes, but it's the mantra I shared earlier, don't accumulate possessions. Accumulate experiences. Now I'm out of time, I'm out of time now. Pun intended, but how do you manage time? It's as unique as you are, but where 
there's a will, there is a way. <laughs> you got to manage the minutes. You got to manage the moments. And one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Why the clock? God bless you and have a smile upon you. Remember, next Monday, I'll be right here. The new time is 7 o'clock a.m. Monday morning, man. God bless you. <laughs>